Hello and welcome to another motors.co.uk review. This time we're going to be looking at one of the most searched for family hatchbacks on the market, the Vauxhall Astra. We'll be seeing how good it is to drive, how practical it is and whether it offers good value for money. Now before we start, don't forget you can watch more videos like this one by clicking subscribe and if you enjoy it, then click like. The Vauxhall Astra first went on sale in the late 70s and it was a direct replacement for the hugely popular Opel Cadet. It was available as a saloon, hatchback or estate. And since then, we've seen six generations, each one of them bringing greater customization as well as cleaner and more efficient engines. Despite a whole new breed of competition, it's maintained its popularity thanks to competitive list prices and decent amounts of standard equipment. And this latest generation features equipment found in more premium rivals, which makes it something of a bargain for a sub £20,000 price tag. It's easy to understand why it is just so popular. One of the areas that Vauxhall wanted to focus on with the latest Astra was the range of efficient engines. These go from a 1.4 litre petrol all the way up to a 1.6 litre diesel. And there are lots of different combinations in between. Overall, the Astra is around 200 kilograms lighter than the outgoing model, which means it offers better levels of efficiency and, of course, economy. There's even a 1.6 litre, 200 brake horsepower petrol version for anyone who really wants a car that's going to be a bit more spirited to drive, but realistically, it's not going to compete with the heavyweight hot hatches out there. The car that we're driving at the moment is the 1.4 litre petrol and it's probably one of the best in the lineup. It does 0 to 60 in around 8 seconds which is more than respectable and will keep going to a top speed of 134 miles per hour. But if you drive it carefully it should return an average fuel economy of around 40 miles per gallon. So there's no question one of the big selling points of the Astra is the way it drives. Okay, it's not up there with the very best in class, but it certainly does a good all round job. The steering has a good weighty feel to it, and the suspension does a great job of absorbing lumps and bumps in the road without carrying them through into the cabin. And even on the more powerful versions, like this 1.4 litre turbo, you can really throw it into the corner and have some confidence that it's gonna go exactly where you place it. Now the cabin isn't exactly what you'd call premium. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Yes, you do get some piano black gloss on show, but there are also a lot of scratchy black plastics which won't age particularly well. For the driver though, you do get a good driving position and it is fully adjustable, especially the steering wheel, which moves in and out as well as up and down. All the controls and functions are logically laid out, so you get an eight inch color touchscreen infotainment system, which is located at the top of the center console, and that operates everything from your DAB radio to your mobile phone and satellite navigation. Underneath, you get climate control, and on this model, you get heated seats and also heated steering wheel. The Astra does offer excellent levels of practicality. You get 370 litres of boot space which can be increased to 1,210 litres with the rear seats folded flat. Now that's more than you get in a Ford Focus but it is still less than the Volkswagen Golf. While the Astra is smaller than the car it replaces, the latest version is actually able to offer its occupants an impressive amount of cabin space. There's good levels of knee and headroom, even with three people in the back. So if you're looking for a comfortable and spacious car, then the Astra isn't a bad choice. Now there is a lot to like about the Vauxhall Astra. The biggest reason is the high levels of equipment that you get a standard. Plus the drive is pleasantly rewarding. The only downsides is the build quality is a little substandard. And because it's built in such huge numbers, residual values won't be as strong as some of its key rivals. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this one, then don't forget to click subscribe. And if you want to see the Astra's main rivals, then follow the links coming up next. Yeah.